Hello, friends, and welcome back to Enterprise Architecture. Now, there have been a few upgrades around here since last time we played, or at least since you all saw me playing. Notably, I've upgraded our tiny reactor to a much bigger reactor. I used the handy guide on leu235.com. I'll put a link in the description below to that for the reactor design. And this is a, a pretty big reactor using the same ingredients we saw last time. We're using those glowstone coolers here still in this reactor. And we're getting a healthy, I think it's 2.2K per tick, although it burns through fuel very, very, very quickly. So that is a significant upgrade to our reactor setup here. And that's going to provide us both the power and the means by which we're going to break down all of these new heavier radioactive isotopes into their other components that we need. So with no further ado, let's dive right in. So as I was mentioning last episode, we cranked through all of these things, the fission reactor, bits and pieces of the main quest line, and all of the basic nuclear ores. And now we have at long last come to the processing chain. So we need to do all of this stuff to get to Californium, which we need for quantum research. So the recipe for quantum research here, of course, uses tiny clumps of Californium. And I think this takes any tiny Californium. We need thermoconductive alloy and we need uh, DU plating, which I think is the depleted uranium plating. So we don't know how to make that yet. We still need to do some more power storage. But we're mainly focused today on getting to the Californium 251. So how do we get to Californium 251? Well, unfortunately, through this. This is um, this is a lot. I'm not going to pretend to say otherwise. There's a lot of different paths to get where we're going. The Californium is mainly over here. But this is a lot to do to get just to Californium. So... We've already done the basics here, right? We've started the fission chain and we have access to uranium 235 and I think we have access to thorium. I started breaking that down between episodes as well because we had a bunch of thorium that we'd already been mining. So I swapped out our card here and changed this to thorium. Let me just stop that for now so that we don't get any more in here and we can keep processing what's in there. We still have a bunch of uranium left in here. So first things first, let's just grab the things we need to complete these quests. We need a chunk of uranium-235, 238, thorium-230, and thorium-232. So that should be one of the quests. And there we go, a bunch of tiny uranium. I already had some thorium hanging out in here. And last but not least, there we go. There's the thorium-232. So let's just drop all of this back into our chest for processing. There we go. Okay, so that is literally all of these quests done. Now, we've also made LEU-235 fuel, so that's easy. HEU-235 we have not made yet because we need uranium and uranium-235 in a different combination. I think this is doable. We do need to disable our LEU-235 production temporarily, though, to get that. So let's turn that off. We just disconnected it from our auto crafting and our super factory manager. And once we've built up enough there, how much do we need for that? Let's see here. We'll be able to craft it in a second, though. 235, yeah, 4, 235, 5, 238. So we'll just wait for that rest of that 230 to come in. Now, while that's coming in, we're going to get this uranium TBU fuel. So, or sorry, thorium-232 to make the TBU fuel. So we need nine pieces of uranium-232. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then that in a block should just give us that fuel. Perfect. That's another quest. Now, I think I can go ahead and just start putting this into the reactor and breaking it down and getting the next little ingredients here. So I'm just going to drop one in there real quick. There we go. Now we've got depleted TVU fuel and that fuel we can then drop back in our fuel reprocessor for reprocessing. And it looks like I'm going to start needing some more storage drawers here. So the thing to do might be to move this over a little bit and do another drawer controller. Or actually, I guess I could just move this over here and use the same drawer controller. That might be the thing to do. So 
And that means we need more storage drawers for all of this wonderful stuff, all of these ingredients. I think this is gonna end up being a wall of storage drawers real quick. Let's lock that up. Oop, we locked that up too slow, didn't we? Nope, that's right, Neptunium. That's what we wanted. The Neptunium comes out and the Uranium comes out. And that goes in there. And it looks like we need more Neptunium to complete this quest. So let's go ahead and make ourselves one more of those thorium-based fuel cells. And we'll uh, cook that down real fast in the reactor. Let's see here, one more of those, great. And take that over here and put that in. Oh, okay, fission's going quick. Getting a lot of power out of that when we do that. And we'll reprocess this. And then this will end up here. And uh, let's go ahead and grab up all of our tiny clumps. There we go, one more. All right, now we can craft this into the next ingredient. Oh, it looks like we're missing one, but that's fine. We'll fix this. There's the uranium. And now the Neptunium goes in here like so. Great. Okay, and that is that quest knocked out. So now what do we do with these? I think these also have to be turned into fuel. Oh, that's the LEU-233 fuel or the HEU-233. So that's the 235. U-233 fuel. So yeah, we're getting into all of these weird other fuels now that we can make. Neptunium, oh, there's the 235. Okay, so do we have enough of that yet? We don't have enough of that yet. So I guess what we need to do here is just cook a whole bunch more of this. So use the reprocessor from our thorium fuel. So I'm gonna make up a bunch of it and we'll cook this down real quick. Let's do like a stack here and turn that into something more usable for us. A whole bunch of this thorium. And after we've processed all that, we will break it down more. Okay, so we're still processing and breaking things down. Let's go ahead and keep working through this chain here with the ingredients that we do have, because we've got a bunch of plutonium now. I don't feel like I should just be having this in my hand. Something about that feels like really not correct. But there's, there's some plutonium I'm just handing in, in, into my hand, and uh, there's some more plutonium and uh, some neptunium. But, you know, it's, it's Minecraft. I'm sure it's relatively safe and doesn't violate any laws to just have this hanging out for whatever reason. Um, okay, so we've finished those quests. We still need plutonium-242 which I'm not sure where we get that, what we get that out of. I don't think we have plutonium-242 yet. Yeah, I don't see it yet, but I'm sure it'll be a byproduct of one of these other processes. It looks like it's supposed to come out of the uranium, or the um, HEU-235 fuel, which we need uranium-235 to make and uranium-238 to make in a different quantity. And since I've stopped making the old fuel, I think I can do the new fuel now. So that's four of one and five of the other, is that right? Uh, there it is. And these all really look alike, which makes it even harder to deal with. Okay, so there's our HEU fuel. And you know what, we can go ahead and make a bunch more of that. Let's just grab a stack of each of those and make as much of this as we can real quick, which might not be a lot, because it doesn't look like we have enough uranium-235 yet. So we'll just go ahead and load this back up real quick. Yeah, there's no more of that. Okay, and let's drop this into our reactor. Okay, so now we're getting depleted HEU fuel. Again there, so that's that quest done. And now if we break this down, we should get plutonium-242, I think, back out. And it does occur to me that I'm probably doing this entirely the wrong way. I probably should be bulk producing these as much as I can, rather than doing it by hand. And we really should just focus in on one section at a time here. Yeah, see, there's our plutonium-242 and whatnot, so we should make a whole bunch more of that HEU fuel. So let's grab the plutonium-242, and we do have empty drawers here, so we may as well use them. And I'm gonna grab that and craft that into 
a big clump of plutonium-242. There we go. Okay, great. And that completes that quest. All right, so we are cranking through this pretty quick. But again, we don't need to do all of these, right? I don't want us to miss the forest for the trees. We really should focus our resources on getting down to this Californium. And these each look like they take three of the fuels here. So we can kind of pick and choose which we want. It looks like this route is kind of a dead end here. We don't actually get to these Californiums from these items. But we definitely do from over here. So it looks like the curium is what we really need to be focusing on here, breaking things down that'll give us curium and volume. And I'm not sure which of these is going to give us the most curium. So let's see here. The left-hand side has typically been the one that's the easiest to get to. So LEP 239 requires plutonium 239 and plutonium 242 which again, we don't have a lot of plutonium-242, not enough to make this at least. So that's something to think about here. Although we could just keep making more of this HEU-235 because that's gonna give us a couple of these items, including the plutonium-239. So this seems to, if I'm following these arrows correctly, this gives us these two, two plutoniums and that gives us the HEP. And HEP gives us the curium and curium gets us to the uh, Lecum, Heckum, <laughs> 247, that gets us in here eventually, and that gets us to Californium. So maybe that's the route to go. So let's make as much of this HEU 235 as we can with our remaining uranium. So to that end, I'm going to turn back on my uranium exporting here so that we get the rest of our uranium ingots in here. I'm going to put thorium to the side for now. We'll, we'll come back to thorium, but we're going to focus on uranium at this moment. And that should slowly get us the HEU fuel that we need here. And I think this LEU fuel, I can't do anything else with. Right? Like this is this is the only thing I can do with it. So let's empty out all of it and let's drop all of it into our reactor here. At least then we'll be generating a whole bunch of power on the side. Yeah, just like that. So that'll that'll at least get us, yeah, 2146 per tick. So that's that's gonna be good for our overall power production here. Much better than anything else that we're doing right now with our power production. I think that's a, a big step up from our fuel burning that we're doing the naphtha into refined fuel. So we'll just burn all of this down real fast. And then we will process all of the LEU-235 as well. So let's do that real fast. Okay, I realized that I didn't really need to be doing the storage the way that I was or using this manufacturer for creating big uranium when I can just use compacting storage drawers instead. So I went ahead and took a second to clean everything up. Here's all of our uranium in a stack, all of our thorium in a stack, plutonium, and our neptunium, and then we have plenty of room to grow. This is using framed trim underneath this to basically connect it as if it were a cable. So this one storage drawer controller controls all of these. So with that set up, we can now go ahead and make our HEU fuel. So using this, we want, yeah, this recipe. And we want to make a whole lot more than that. Let's see here. That's our 235. And actually, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to make too much more than that because we are basically out of uranium 235 at this point. So we're going to go ahead and start cranking that down. And we will keep on our production here of our uranium. So let's go ahead and drop this here in there and grab our rest of our depleted fuel back out. And that'll just go for a while. So we're going to do that. And we will maybe increase the speed of this a little bit now that we have more power production as well. So I'm going to do all that here and we will meet back up in a second once we have a much more depleted HEU-235. Okay, we've made a decent amount of plutonium at this point. So we can use these together to make this, the HEP-239 fuel, and we don't have a lot of it we can make here, but I think we're going to make four pieces of it. Is that all said and done what we can do? Yeah, four pieces. Not great, but still not terrible. And we can just drop the extra in there. And I accidentally ended up making a little bit of Americum because I used the wrong recipe for one of the previous tier fuels. So that also has been added. Whoa! Okay. Oof. 
Uh, whatever I did was wrong. Okay, that is that is not looking good. Okay, that is curium all over the place. I just had a meltdown. Oof. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can't find a way to clean this up real quick and um, figure out what happened. Uh, back back in a flash. Let me grab the buckets. Okay. Well, I mean this reactor is effectively ruined so we are gonna have to spend a good deal of time cleaning all of this up and hauling out all of this curium that spilled into it this is just a disaster just a gross gross disaster here so we'll do what we can to try and clean as much of this up as possible but it looks like this is going to be a, effectively a whole teardown just to get this back up and running. So <laughs> that's probably the next uh, 30, 45 minutes of my life. I will uh, see you all back here in a few seconds for your time, but uh, probably a good part of my day. All right, so the cleanup is largely complete, but you can see we've lost a whole lot of our reactor. I broke down the first few layers of it, but about half of our reactor is now missing. So I'm gonna have to read up a little bit further on what we need to do to prevent meltdowns. I assume this means we need some sort of a fluid cooling system that we had not accounted for. So that makes sense. That's what we have to do in mechanism as well. So let me see what I can come up with here and get this back online as quickly as possible. Okay, so it looks like I didn't have optimal cooling with that glowstone casings. Uh, we need something a little bit more powerful, and to get there, we need to unlock some of these other things that I had been kind of avoiding. So I think we're going to go Enderium Cryotheum Lapis and Emerald so far, because we don't have a way of getting Helium yet. I guess I could do Magnesium as well. But I'm going to unlock a bunch of these because we have actually been cranking out a lot of logistics research in the time that we've been building all of this stuff and cleaning all of our messes. So now that I've removed a lot of bottlenecks in my green research production, we can grab all of that up. Okay, let's see what we can get here. Let's try Enderium. Let's try Cryotheum. Let's try... We'll turn on the complex ones. Let's try Lapis and Emerald. How are we looking on remaining? Oh, we've got a decent amount of logistics left. I know we're going to use that, but maybe Magnesium as well? Okay, and I don't think we're quite ready for Helium. Okay, so let me go back to the drawing board on my reactor design. I'm going to run this through and see if I can come up with a more efficient design this time that melts down less. And I still think all of this can be passively cooled if we're doing it properly. So let me let me work on this for a second. Okay, so now we have an entirely new reactor design with those new blocks. This is much more complicated than the packed one I had done before, but it should be more efficient. Again, I'm using that same design planner. My concern here though, of course, is that I don't know if the heat is going to be dissipated properly. I looked and the rates that were in the calculator by default are not the ones in this pack. So I wanna underscore how dangerous that is. You need to type in the actual values from the configuration JSON file for nuclear craft that you're gonna find in this pack. Otherwise that reactor planner is gonna lead you astray. So I think this is going to work for what we are trying to do but it still might melt down. So we're gonna try it and see what happens. Okay, let's make up some more of our HEU-233. Uh, I guess we're gonna only make one of those. And let's also make some of our HEU-235, I guess. Yeah, HEU-235, let's make some of that. Okay, fingers crossed, let's see what happens. Well, the heat isn't ticking up here with the HEU, but HEU is relatively tame. We already know that. It's also going much slower. And 
we're getting 50,000 RF per tick. So that is a dramatic increase in power over where we were. Okay, we can, we're okay. Heat is dissipating, all this is good. Okay, and for the first time ever, we've got more power in here than we're using. So that is astonishing. All right, so there's all of our fuel. Okay, let's check this one. HEU-235, also heat holding steady. All right, now for the real test, the HEP-239 that caused our last meltdown. Okay, so far we're holding steady. Yeah, okay, so I think this improved design is working and it is keeping us from burning the building down. That is wonderful news. Okay, so where are we at now? Yeah, we have a whole bunch of curium as melted down reactor core, but we don't have any actual curium yet. So let's go ahead and dump this apart and see what we get out of it. All right, Americum, Americum, curium, curium. Okay, so this is Americum 243 and these are 241. So let me put down a bunch of more storage drawers so we can sort this out. Okay, so we got curium 245, curium 246, Americum, Americ Americium 241, 242, and we had had, I think, some 243 earlier as well. So all of these are now ready to go and stored. So next to get towards our Californium, we either need to go for the LECM 247 or the HECM 245. What do we need for this? Uh, curium 245 and curium 246. We have curium 245 and 246, but we have hardly any of the 245. So I think we need to make a bunch more of the HEP 239 which means we need more plutonium. Okay, so we got credit for our curium 245 and 246, and now we should be able to, with the little tiny bit that we have assembled here, make our Heckam 245. Okay, one piece of that, and there is another quest done. Let's drop this in and see if it burns down. No, uh, still in the negative on heat. Okay, there's our depleted Heckam. And with that, we should be able to drop this in here. And with any luck, get a little bit of Californium. Berkelium, Californium, there we go. Not enough to make a single ingot. Okay, so we need to make a little bit more. We made some advancements, but yeah, we've not got enough here to really count for our quests yet. Okay, so I'm going to put together some more storage doors here and fill this in. Okay, so that was taking a while. So I automated all of this setup, at least for the levels that we're currently at. So let me show you what we've done here. I've taken the Super Factory Manager here and I've taught the recipes for HEU-235 and HEP-239 and we'll do the last one as well, the Heckam in a second. Now, those are now being crafted out of the ingredients that it finds in the storage drawers and it's storing the results back into this box here. So the HEU and the H uh, HEP are both going in here. Now, those fuels are being pulled out and inserted automatically into our fission reactor via this item conduit cable that ties into the item conduits over here. Now that's pulling out from this system and that is filtered on export here and filtered on import there. It's then exporting the finished fuels back into the fuel reprocessor here. And again, this is filtering on top. So only the expended fuels, the depleted fuels, I should say, are going into the reprocessor and then everything comes out of the reprocessor and goes back into the storage array. So basically through this, we are slowly pulling the items out of our storage drawers here and putting them into this for processing slowly a bit at a time. And that means that we can just automate through all of those. Now to show you kind of how this is set up, you've already seen it a few times, but let's go ahead and set up for our last ingredient here. 
the HEP 239, or excuse me, the HECM 245. So let's set that up real quick. And to make that, we need Curium 245 and 246. So HECM 245. So we create a trigger here, and we're gonna name that after exactly what we're doing. So HECM 245. Just like that. Okay, save that. And for our input, we are going to be putting our curium in here. So we get that from our drawer controller. And we'll just any target is fine. And this time we do curium. Right, curium 245 and then curium 246. Those both go in here. And then the crafter we make our Heckam 245 with that. And I can't remember the proper ingredients here. So let's do curium. I think it's, I know it's four and five, but I don't know how many of which, but this will tell us real quick. Yeah, there we go, that's right, okay. And then priority, move before crafting, and then the excess inventories go back into our drawer controller. Great. And then last but not least, we want our output here. So the fuel that we made needs to go back into the drawer controller. And we're just going to whitelist that. And this one. Okay, great. So in theory, once we connect all this up, it should start working. I'm just gonna move this over one pixel just for my sanity's sake. Now, it's not gonna move it yet. And the reason why it's not gonna move it yet is because we don't actually have a drawer for it. So we need to come back over here to our curium and grab up enough of it to make a couple more pieces. So let's take that and that come over here and make one piece of our Heckam. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right. I'm, I'm positive of this fact. Okay, put that in there, add this back in here. Inventory is clean. And you can see the fuel is just being pulled out as soon as it's available, as soon as there is a slot in here to take it. So it's auto crafting it, automatically putting it into our reactor and our reactor is immediately processing that down. Okay, there we go. It's all coming back out the system. And there is our Berkelium and our Californium coming back out. Great. And that should mean that we have enough now to get a piece of each of these. And it looks like we can use the Berkelium actually here to make the Heb 248 and get Californium 250. So let's see about that. We'll grab Looks like we don't have enough Berkelium 248 yet, but we do have the Berkelium 247, so we can grab that and just wait for the last of this 248 to complete. Okay, there's our 248. And I don't think that's enough yet to make the correct lab, because the last one we want to make here is Heb 248, right? Yeah, and we need four pieces of that. So let's add that to our shopping list here. And we could teach the system how to make that. I don't know if this is more efficient to get Californium or less than doing one of these other ones. So if we want Californium 250, the most efficient way to get it is the heck of 249. And the heck of 249, yeah, is all the way over here. So we have not been making that chain, unfortunately, because we don't have Californium 252. So that is the most efficient way to get it. So we might need to restructure things and reprioritize what we are making because we have not been chasing that chain. All right, y'all, I have spent a good long while digging through these recipes and tried to find a single chain path to get the most efficient production of Californium 250. Now, we were almost on the right track, but we need to make a few modifications to the path that we were on and rethink a little bit of this. To get to Californium 250, there's a bunch of different ways to get tiny clumps of Californium. And each of these recipes as we go through this chain are going to have multiple ways of getting where we're going. But from what I can determine, the best way to get here is 
using the HEC 249. This one here, this one gives us the highest yield of Californium 250. So since that is what we are trying to get to, because we're going to use this in our research right here, since that's the main goal, we want to make sure that we are using the recipe that gives us the most of it. And in this case, that appears to be the HECF 249, HECF 249, right? So the HECF 249 fuel is actually over here. Now, to get the HEC 249 fuel, we need four of the Californium 249 and five of the Californium 252. Now, the most efficient way to get those two ingredients, I believe, is going to be from our LECM 245. Where is that? LECM 245 right here. Okay, so that gives us our Californium. So the LECM245, we actually can make with curium. We need the curium-246 and the curium-247 from over here, this region. Now, that's most efficiently made with the LEA242. Where is that? You know what? I don't even see it here. But if we go and we look here at the Curium 247 and the recipe for that, yeah, the LEA 242, which I can't even find on this list, that is going to give us the right balance of those two ingredients. It gives us 40 of the Curium 246 and 8 of the Curium 247. So the LEA 242 is what we're going for. Now, LEA 242 itself is then made from America. Americium? Americium? Whatever it is. Anyways, we need one of the 242 and we need eight of the 243. So to get to that, we go to the LEN 236 fuel, which again is not highly listed here. So let's take a look at that. LEN 236 fuel. Okay. So the 236 fuel is actually made from Neptunium, and that means we need Neptunium 236 and 237. Now, to get that amount of Neptunium, we want the TBU fuel, and the TBU fuel, of course, is just made from Thorium 232, okay? So that's the entire chain that we are going to be setting up and drilling down on. Now, that means I need to refactor some parts of this, mainly my fuel and my machine inventory manager. So the first thing we're going to do is disconnect all of these because we do not want to make any of these ingredients anymore. Okay. And rather than getting rid of all this, because I might need to come back to this for some reason, I'm going to create myself a new command group. Put this over here. And I'm going to call this my thorium chain. Okay, great. So we save that. I'm going to now set up an entirely new setup here for each of those in turn. So we're going to auto craft each of the different ingredients I just mentioned and set this up real fast. And we'll be back in a flash for you, but it's probably going to be like half an hour for me. So we'll see y'all in a moment. Okay, so at long last, we finally got our first pieces of Californium 250. And there we go. That quest is now completed. We can put these in here. And I also had to go ahead and set up a few more mini reactors for our higher tier fuels. So this is mainly just processing our TBU fuel, that thorium fuel. And each of these mini reactors is doing all of the other four fuels in turn. So we don't have bottlenecks there in that system. But that means California 250. Okay, Californium, excuse me, 250. And that completes this quest right here. Looking pretty good. There we go. We actually had to submit it. Great. So now we have access to the resident upgrades and we can make our helium collectors as well. Solar panel Mark 7 is nearby. The level 4 capacitors here. All of these great things are coming together. Higher tiers of... Oh, and even, even the next tier is also unlocked. All right, so all of that stuff is ready for us.
But for now, I think that is a good stopping point for this episode. We made a lot of progress in creating all of our various chemicals here in our different reactors, and we have a, a vast array of highly radioactive material here that we're kind of just standing in the middle of. So thanks again for watching Enterprise Architecture, and we'll see you back here next time. Bye, friends.